What's up guys, EJ here back with another video and I wanted to do this earlier in the week but I've been waiting for some stuff that uh, didn't come until today. So it's uh, my DVD update for um, July 13th, uh, 2012. I've got uh, 11 new films to show you, um, mostly from the 80s. Um, I'm going to start picking up all these uh, 80s comedies uh, that I grew up watching and loving. Um, it may as well be five films because one of the movies spawned uh, six sequels and um, you should be able to tell what they are uh, pretty soon. Uh, so these are some classic 80s comedies that I loved growing up as a kid. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to break this into two halves. Um, uh, first we have uh, Bachelor Party from uh, 1984. Of course starring Tom Hanks and Adrian Zmed. Um, back when uh, Tom Hanks used to do uh, great comedies in the 80s. Um, this was uh, one of his uh, biggest ones. It's not a great film, but it's pretty fun, uh, much like uh, The Hangover, if you want to compare it to a, uh, a modern film. Um, Tawny Katane is also in it. He plays, uh, she plays his wife. Uh, just a bunch of guys getting together for a uh, bachelor party at a hotel. Uh, lots of crazy stuff happens. Uh, involving hookers and uh, I believe a horse at one point. Um, yeah, a lot of fun from what I remember, but not one of Hanks' best. But I, I remember watching it a lot when I was younger. Okay, up next we have another classic. And that is um, Coming to America uh, from 1988. Of course, uh, starring uh, Eddie Murphy back when he used to make uh, good films. And not like crappy... Uh, family-oriented comedies that he's been making in the past uh, decade, it seems. Um, Coming to America is a hilarious film where he plays a African prince and uh, his parents want him to, to find a wife, a, uh, a princess, and of course he looks on the map and uh, he sees uh, the word Queens in New York and he tra travels to Queens with his uh, I believe Arsenio Hall plays his brother in this film. I'm not sure, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. And uh, they get into lots of uh, trouble in Queens. Uh, James L. Jones plays his uh, dad. And uh, Hall and Murphy play various characters throughout the film. Sort of in the, uh, I don't know, call it the... Uh, uh, I don't want to say Tyler Perry mold, because he's awful, but uh, you know what I mean. Eddie Murphy plays lots of different characters in like a film like Norbit, um, like this, but this film's a great movie and Norbit was shit. Um, I remember the barber scene being completely hilarious. He plays like all the characters in that in that scene. Um, you can see on the back, that's all like Eddie Murphy in this scene right here, like three different characters. Um, yeah, a great film from the 80s, uh, Coming to America. Okay, up next, uh, classic. Can't believe it's taken me this long to pick it up. And that is Uncle Buck with uh, John Candy from 1989. Uh, of course, directed by John Hughes. It's been a long time since I've seen this, uh, which is a shame because I used to love John Candy, obviously. And uh, it was a real shame when he died. Died. Um, I, I just remember hating the, the girl who played the daughter so much. She was such a bitch to John Candy in this film. Um, she like she drove me nuts every time I watch it. Uh, the actress's name is uh, Jean Kelly. Um, obviously not to be confused with uh, the dancing Jean Kelly from the uh, 40s and 50s. Um, and uh, Macaulay Culkin plays the uh, the younger brother. Um, yeah, John Candy, great as always. Uncle Buck, uh, just a great family comedy from 1989. Okay. Uh, Last but not least for this sort of first half of this update, and uh, I thought of this movie when uh, when I was doing the Alphabet of Awesome Movies Part Two, the final final letter uh, Z, uh, chosen by Dyslexic Nick himself, and the word he chose was Zap, and uh, I thought of this film, and um, I remember liking it a lot, and that is Zapped with uh, Scott Baio and uh, Willie Ames. Uh, from 1982, sort of a fun high school uh, teen sex comedy where uh, Scott Baio ends up with these uh, telekinetic powers 
and he basically uses them to rip the shirts and dresses of uh, high school girls. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I remember seeing the sequel as well, Zapped Again, like in the 90s. Uh, that was an okay film, but I probably won't get it. I wasn't originally going to buy this, but uh, doing the Outfit of Awesome movies really made me think of this film, and I really enjoyed it when I was younger. Um, I saw it in like, high school back in the 90s as well. And uh, Scott Bayo and Zapped, if you haven't seen it, check it out, because it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, the second half of this update is going to be seven films that all came out in the 80s, except for one. Uh, the last sequel was a 90s film. But, uh, and that is, of course, the undeniably great Police Academy from uh, 1984. I used to love the Police Academy films uh, when I was living in England, and I'd watch them all the time when I was a kid. Uh, of course, you have Steve Gutenberg as uh, Carrie Mahoney. Um, who gets forced to join the academy after he, uh, he basically uh, vandalizes some guy's car. He's working at a, uh, a car lot and he won't park this guy's uh, Trans Am. And he ends up uh, sort of putting it on two wheels and putting it in between two cars. I love that scene. Um, that's sort of the opening scene. But uh, of course you have um, greats like uh, the late great Bubba Smith as uh, Hightower, um, Marion Ramsey, who played uh, Hooks, the uh, soft-spoken uh, woman who always yells something at the end when she catches the bad guy. Um, you have Jones, played by uh, uh, Michael Winslow, who's also great, does all the funny uh, noises with his voice, and uh, G.W. Bailey, who plays uh, Lieutenant Harris. And uh, probably my favorite character when I was a kid was uh, Sergeant Callahan, played by uh, the lovely uh, Leslie Easterbrook, uh, who m many of you may know from uh, um, The Devil's Rejects. Uh, she played the, uh, the Firefly's mother in that film, I believe. Um, and of course you have George Gaines as uh, Commandant Lassard, always driving around in a golf cart and uh, tending to his goldfish. Um, yeah. Loved the Police Academy films, and especially the first one, still uh, still a lot of fun. And uh, Kim Cattrall is in this movie as uh, Mahoney's love interest. And I can't forget, uh, go on without mentioning uh, Taco Berry, uh, played by uh, David Graff, who uh, passed away some years ago now. Uh, he was great as the gun-toting madman. Um, yeah, Police Academy, love it. Okay, obviously I picked up all the sequels. Uh, you have Police Academy 2, um, their first assignment from 1985. Um, I'll just mention that uh, I was never a huge fan of this sequel growing up, and I know why now, because uh, Sergeant Callahan wasn't even in this film. And uh, obviously I was a big fan of Leslie Easterbrook at that time. Uh, but I rewatched it again a couple nights ago, and I really enjoyed it. It made me laugh quite a bit. and. Uh, it adds quite a few new characters. Um, you have uh, Captain Mauser and his uh, sidekick Proctor um, as sort of the, uh, the new foil for Mahoney, sort of replacing Lieutenant Harris uh, and G.W. Bailey's character. And of course you also have uh, Zed, played by uh, Bobcat Goldthwait, the leader of the street gang who sort of terrorizes the city in this film, uh, including a, uh, a nerdy shopkeep owner, um, played by uh, Ted, I'm going to probably mess his name up, it's uh, Kazarinski, who played uh, Sweet Chuck, and he's not on the cover of this, but uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about, the little guy with the glasses, <laughs> uh, Zed is always just like screaming and yelling, yelling at him in, uh, in the next film, which I'll get to next, and that is Please Count Me 3, Back in Training. Uh, from 1986, uh, Zed and Sweet Chuck both become uh, police officers in this film. This was always my favorite of the sequels growing up. Uh, it's just hilarious. I love the beginning and the addition of a uh, character called Nakata, a sort of uh, an Asian uh, character, if you like. I believe he also played Takashi in uh, Revenge of the Nerds, one of my favorite characters in that film. Um, 
but yeah, you have new recruits in this movie. And I love the beginning when Sweet Chuck is uh, is driving toward to the academy on his little scooter, and some kid passes him on his uh, on his bike. He sort of shakes his head as uh, Sweet Chuck is going really slow, and uh, Sweet Chuck yells, "This is not Le Mans," and that's a a line I've used like my whole life in driving when people like. <laughs> Pass me on the freeway going like a hundred, I'll, I'll yell out, this is not Le Mans. And it's one of the movie lines that I've always used. There he is. Sweet Chuck right there. And of course, uh, you have Zed down there. Um, yeah, this was always one of my favorite of the uh, Police Academy films. Okay, up next we have number four. Uh, Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol. And I don't remember this film at all. And, and also helps doesn't help that this is the last film that, to come in and I haven't watched it yet. I watched the first three and the fifth one over the past couple of days. Um, but this film has uh, Sharon Stone in it, which I was surprised to see. I don't remember that at all. And also uh, David Spade is in this film as well as a uh, loopy skateboarder. And that's a quote on the back. Um, but yeah, I don't really remember four very well. Um, okay, up next. Of course, we have Police Academy 5, uh, Assignment, Miami Beach. Um, this was also one of my favorite of the sequels. I know it gets uh, ragged on pretty hard these days, but uh, I always enjoyed it. I, I like the setting in Miami and uh, this, the scenes in the airport and on the airplane are a lot of fun. And I just love what Callahan is wearing in those scenes. Uh, she, she, she looks damn sexy in this film, especially when she's on the airplane and there are two kids sitting next to her on, on the plane and uh, she's trying to sleep and they're like looking down her shirt. Um, and uh, Janet Jones plays the uh, the uh, female love interest of uh, the main character, um, who isn't uh, Steve Gutenberg. Uh, he, I believe the fourth one was the last one he appeared in. And um, there's sort of this uh, jewelry heist and these uh, jewel thieves are trying to get back their bag from uh, Commandant Lessard. The bags got switched to the airport. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this. I always have. Um, and again, like 3, it, it sort of ends with a big chase on uh, boats like like the hovercrafts in the uh, Florida Everglades. I forget what those machines are called exactly, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, Number six, Police Academy Six, um, City Under Siege. I don't remember this at all, except that this sort of a criminal mastermind. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to say much more about it, except uh, I don't remember it. Cause, and I also haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I do plan to watch it this weekend. And uh, last but not least, and maybe probably definitely least, is uh, Police Academy Mission to Moscow. And this came out in 1994, and uh, I moved to the States in 1992, and I definitely don't remember seeing this, uh, like, after it came out. So I really can't say anything about it, but I know it's crap. That's all I've ever heard about this film. Um, so that's uh, Police Academy Mission to Moscow. Uh, it came out in 1994. So uh, those are my 11 pickups. Uh, five... 80s comedy classics and the six police academy sequels obviously let me know what you think i used to love these movies when i was a kid i watch them all the time and uh, i watched uh the first three and and the fifth one over the past couple days i'll probably watch the fourth one tonight um so uh let me know what you think as always thank you for watching and i'll see you